In this video, I'm gonna show you multiple attacks. I'm firstly gonna show you how to poison ARP caches on PCs. ARP or address resolution protocol is a fundamental building block in networks today. Basically, it allows devices to learn the MAC addresses of other devices on an ethernet network. Once we've poisoned the ARP cache of a device, we're going to implement a man in the middle attack where we view the passwords and data sent between multiple devices in our network. I'm going to show you how to capture usernames and passwords as well as data sent between a router and a host in our topology. But rather than just talking about this, I want to show you practically how this actually works. I'm going to show you using Wireshark captures, how ARP works, how ARP caches are then poisoned using Etacap and how we can implement a man in the middle attack using a virtual network running in this example in EVENG. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please like this video and please click on the bell to get notifications when I post a new video. Disclaimer as always, the information shared here is for educational purposes only. Don't use the information that I'm sharing here to go and hack a public network that you don't have permission to hack. Only hack networks that you have explicit permission to hack or test networks such as the one that I'm showing you here. In this example, I'm using EvenG in the cloud, but EvenG allows you to virtualize networks on your laptop. It's great software. I'd recommend that you use EvenG or GNS3 or Cisco Viral if you wanna learn how to build networks and virtualize networks on your laptop. So let's look at this practically. So on the Windows 10 host, what does the ARP cache currently look like? So firstly, ipconfig shows us the IP address of this host. It has IP address 10.1.1.100. Default gateway is 10.1.1.254, which is the router in this topology. So here's the router. It's a Cisco router, but you could use any router if you prefer. Show IP interface brief. This is the IP address of the gigabit 00 interface. That is the interface connecting the router to the switch in our topology. The router has this MAC address on gigabit 00. So show interface gigabit 00 shows us that the MAC address is 5001-0009 followed by four zeros. On the Windows 10 host, ARP-A, this is the MAC address associated with that IP address. In other words, this device has learnt the MAC address of the router correctly. 5001 followed by three zeros and a nine followed by four zeros. That's the MAC address of the router. Now to prove the point, I'm going to delete the ARP cache on the PC. But before I do that, let's run Wireshark so that we can see what's going on. I'm going to run Wireshark on Ethernet zero. That's the Ethernet interface connecting the PC to our network. So here's our Wireshark capture. We see a lot of traffic, but I'm gonna filter for ARP. Windows 10 sends a lot of traffic into the network. So what I'm gonna do is delete the ARP cache. And what you'll see is ARP traffic has been generated in Wireshark. We can see that this device with MAC address starting with 5001 is sending a broadcast into the network. This is an ARP asking who has IP address 10.1.1.254 tell 10.1.1.100. Okay, so IP config slash all shows us that this PC, our Windows 10 host, has this MAC address. The local PC with this MAC address is sending a broadcast into the network asking for the MAC address of 10.1.1.254. Notice the target MAC address is blank. It's a bunch of zeros. That's because the PC doesn't know the MAC address of the router. It's asking for the MAC address of the router, basically saying who has this IP address. The router then replies back saying, I have this IP address 
and here's my MAC address. That's sent as a unicast back to the PC. So basically the PC sends a message into the network. It's a broadcast that's flooded by the switch. The router replies back with its MAC address. It's a unicast that gets sent to the PC so that the PC can learn the MAC address of the router. Now on the switch, this is a Cisco switch, show MAC address table, we can see the MAC address of the PC and the MAC address of the router. Those MAC addresses have been learnt by the switch. The switch currently hasn't learnt the Kali Linux host MAC address yet. We can see that the PC is on gigabit 01 and the router is on gigabit 02. Those MAC addresses were learnt dynamically. So PC is on this interface, router is on this interface. So on the Kali Linux host, ifconfig, pipe that to more. IP address of Kali is that, MAC address is this. I'll ping the default gateway just to generate some traffic. Cancel that. On the switch, show MAC address table. The switch has now learnt the MAC address of the Kali Linux host. Okay, so this is where it gets interesting. In Kali Linux, I'm gonna go to Applications, Sniffing and Spoofing, and select Etacap. I'm gonna go to Sniff. I'm using Unified Sniffing because I only wanna sniff one interface, which is Ethernet Zero. So Unified Sniffing has started. I'm then gonna go to Hosts, Scanned for Hosts. So we're gonna scan for hosts in the network. It's scanned for 255 hosts in our subnet. Notice two hosts have been added to the hosts list. Etacap has discovered two hosts in our network. We can view those hosts by going to hosts, hosts list, and we'll see our two devices. 10.11.100 is the Windows PC. 10.11.254 is our router. So I'm gonna add the router to target one. I'm going to add the Windows host to target two. On the Windows host, you'll notice a bunch of ARP broadcasts have been sent out from 10.11.156, which is our Kali Linux host. Once again, ifconfig pipe more. This is the IP address of the hacking host. Now that we've discovered the hosts in the network and specified our targets, Next step is to implement a man in the middle attack and we're gonna implement op poisoning. We're going to sniff the remote connections and click okay. So we are poisoning these two devices, 10.11.254 in group one and 10.11.100 in group two. Back on the Windows host, the device is receiving op messages stating that this IP address is using this MAC address. On the router, show interface gigabit zero zero. This is the MAC address of the actual router, 5001.0009. Note that is different to what we're seeing here. This is 5001.0002, not 5001.0009. So on the Windows host, if we look at the ARP cache, so ARP-A, this IP address is using the same MAC address as this IP address, which is our Kali Linux host. So on Kali, let's start Wireshark so that we can sniff traffic. We've implemented a man in the middle attack now because when traffic is sent to the router, it's actually gonna be sent to the Kali Linux host. On the switch once again. Show MAC address table. This MAC address is the Kali Linux host. MAC address is found on gigabit 00. The router using this MAC address is actually found on gigabit 02. So the traffic is gonna flow to the Kali Linux host and then to the router. So on Kali, I'll start a Wireshark capture on Ethernet zero. Mm. 
We can see a bunch of traffic, but let's filter for Telnet. Now in this example, let's assume that the administrator made a bad decision and enabled Telnet on the router. So when I open up PuTTY, I'm gonna use Telnet and I'm gonna Telnet to the router, 10.1.1.254. I'm prompted for a password, which I'll enter and log in. The font is very small, so I'll change that. So I'll change the appearance of PuTTY. Make this bigger. So there you go. What you'll notice is I was prompted for a username and password which I entered and I've been able to log into the router. I'll type enable to go to privilege mode and enter my password. So I'm now in privilege mode on the router. And if I type something such as show run, I'll see the running configuration of the router displayed on the Windows computer. However, all that data has been captured by the Kali Linux host. Traffic from 10.1.1.100, the PC going to the router. Scrolling down, we can see a password prompt as an example, and then we can see the password, C-I-S-C-O. It's not very easy to see that, however, so I'm gonna right click here and go to follow TCP stream. And what you'll notice is the password is displayed. So there's the original password. In other words, the Telnet password. Here's the enable password. And here's the full running configuration of the router displayed on the Kali Linux host. I've been able to capture the entire Telnet session between the host and the router because the traffic is going through the Kali Linux host. We have poisoned the ARP cache on the Windows computer. Now the same thing is true if we used HTTP on the Windows PC. So I'll open up a browser and browse to the router 10.1.1.254 and log in with my password of Cisco, Cisco. Back in Kali, I'll search for HTTP. Now the Windows host is sending HTTP traffic not just to the router. So I'll filter for IP address equals 10.1.1.254. So we see traffic from the Windows PC to the router and not to other destinations on the internet. So scrolling down, we can see that the router is saying the session is unauthorized. So the PC is now sending authorization information, including the username and password to the router. So we've been able to capture the username and password because it's sent in clear text from the PC to the router. You shouldn't be using clear text protocols in your network today. So in other words, we shouldn't be using Telnet, we shouldn't be using HTTP, we should be using encrypted protocols. But I've been able to capture the username and password of the router through Telnet and HTTP by simply implementing an ETACAP op poisoning attack. Now, a lot of Cisco engineers will back up the configuration of a router using TFTP. So we'll use a command such as copy running config TFTP. And in this example, I'll specify the Windows host as the TFTP server. Before I press enter there, on the Windows host, I'm going to run TFTP32, which is a TFTP server. So that TFTP server is now running on the Windows PC. On the router, I'll press enter now to back up the configuration to the TFTP server. I'm getting permission denied there, so let me try that again. And I'll specify a different file name. Back on the TFTP server, here's a problem. I'll specify security is none. Once again, that's not necessarily a good idea. I'll specify the desktop as the destination folder and click OK. So try that again. So copy running config TFTP, specify the TFTP server, specify the file name, and notice you can see the configuration was copied successfully. Now that's OK, but back on our Kali Linux host, I'll filter for TFTP and you can see the file name there. 
there was a TFTP error. So what I'll do actually is scroll all the way to the end so that we see the successful write. Here's an acknowledgement of a block of data. TFTP sends data in blocks. So the sender will send a block of data. The receiver will send back an acknowledgement. So there's an acknowledgement of part of data. Here's the actual data from the router to the TFTP server. I'll right click on the data and show packet bytes. There's the last part of the router's configuration. So that's okay, but let's see if we can get some passwords. So scrolling right up to block one, passwords are at the top of the router configuration. So here's block one sent from the router to the TFTP server, right click and select show packet bytes. As you can see there, that's the enable password of the router. We can see the entire router configuration by simply looking at the blocks of data. So here's block two, look at that block of data. Here's the loopback interface IP address. There's gigabit zero zero's IP address. Now it's once again bad practice to use clear text protocols in networks today. You should be using encrypted protocols wherever possible. You can also stop this kind of nonsense in networks today by implementing dynamic ARP inspection on your switches. I'll show you how to stop these kind of hacks in subsequent videos. This video is getting too long. Now this is a troubleshooting hint. If traffic is not being forwarded by your Kali Linux host, type this command. This command forwards IP version 4 traffic. So it basically allows the Kali Linux host, well, any Linux host, to receive traffic and then forward it on uh, when destined for another host. So it basically acts as a router, receives traffic for another device and basically sends it back into the network. So if you have issues forwarding traffic, then use this command. Okay, so in this video, I showed you how to implement a man-in-the-middle attack using ARP poisoning using the application Etacap, which is available in Kali Linux. Now, once again, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please like this video and please click on the bell to get notifications when I post a new video. I'm David Bumble and I want to wish you all the very best. I've been in your world.